Let's talk filmmaking with Unity, specifically rigging characters for animation. There are two ways that you can go about this. The first is using Unity's own internally developed animation rigging package, which we are going to look at in this video, as well as rigging characters using a third-party asset, which you can get from the asset store by the name Puppet 3D is the name of this plugin, okay? So let's just start with Unity's own internal animation rigging package. Let's go through the workflow and see what is required. So we're going to select the character. We're going to go to animation rigging. I've already installed the package. Both of these packages I've already installed, so that's why they're here. So animation rigging, bone renderer setup. I want to see the bones a little more clearly, so I change this to yellow. Now with the character still selected, I go to animation rigging and rig setup. Now with this, uh, I have uh, the components added to my character. It's also added a rig item. So um, underneath this rig item, I'm going to create an empty game object. I'm going to call this right arm IK. And I'm going to assign this game object a two bone IK constraint. Here it is. And filling, setting this uh, constraint up is a semi-automated process. It's not fully automated. So how do we set it up? Well, we go into our skeleton, hips, spine, chest, left shoulder, neck, right shoulder, right arm, right elbow, right wrist. So the wrist will be our tip and we can drag that in. So uh, the wrist, the tip uh, will be our wrist, the midpoint will be our forearm or elbow, and the root will be our upper arm. Now, we can, in, we can manually drag elbow into mid and arm into root, or once we've set up the tip, once we've defined this, we can right click on the two bone IK constraint name and go to auto setup from tip transform. This is why I say it's a semi-automated process and not fully automated. It requires your initial definition for the tip slot before it can search out the uh, the mid and the root. Now, when we click this automated, I'm sorry, the semi-automated setup, it creates two additional game objects underneath our right arm IK. It gives us a target and a hint. A target is going to be the control by which we move the wrist, the arm around, and the hint is going to be used as a um, as instruction to tell the IK constraint which way the elbow should bend. So let's set these up. So with target selected, I'm coming into scene view, animation rigging. I hit the plus sign and I expand this. So locator effector, I hit the target and I search for box effector. There it is, I hit enter. And we don't see it because it's somewhere off else in world space. It's at zero, zero, zero. Our character is not. Our character's far from that. He's at one, six, seven, negative zero, negative three. All right. But animation rigging package provides an easy way to align these things. You select your uh, controller element. In this case, it's our target. And we find our the bone we wish to align it to, which in this case is the wrist. So I'm on Mac, so I'm command clicking so that I have target and wrist both selected simultaneously. I come up to animation rigging and I select align transform. You can see that it aligns the transform, the target to his wrist perfectly. We're going to do the same process for the hint. So I'm going to uh, click on the plus sign. I'm going to change the color to green to differentiate it from the color of the target. I'm going to choose elect locator effector. I'm going to select the target and I'm going to give this a ball target. Here we are. And we're going to align it the same way. So I am selecting hint and I'm going to command click elbow, which is the bone I wish to align it to. I go to animation rigging and align transform. Now, right off the bat, you can see it's perfectly aligned to his elbow, but we want it to be behind his elbow as a constant reminder to the IK chain that the elbow should bend in that direction. A common beginner mistake is that before, like as soon as you uh, 
chain as soon as you align the transform you might want to push this backwards but you'll notice you still have the elbow selected the physical elbow and that's why you distort the arm so i'm command z and i want to make sure i only have the hint selected which is this ball effector i'm going to push that back in world space so now we're done we have completely rigged this character's right arm with an ik constraint if we want to rig this entire character, we need to take the process that we just did and apply a two bone IK constraint to his other arm, to each of his legs. We have to use a different style or a different type of constraint to provide controls for his hips, for his center of gravity, possibly for his chest, for each of his shoulders, for his neck and his head. And you need to do all of that effort to simply have a character that you can animate. Well, that's a lot of work, especially if you are going to uh, rig multiple characters for one scene. Which brings us to Puppet 3D. I wish I would have found Puppet 3D much earlier. So here's what we can do with Puppet 3D. I'm going to select my character. I'm going to look in his hierarchy, and I'm, I notice that he's got... Uh, elements that are unnecessary. There are things in here that are going to be created for us by Puppet 3D. So I'm going to right click on the prefab. A prefab is any game object that's blue and black. A regular game object is just a wireframe. So I'm going to select the prefab. I'm going to right click, come down to the prefab menu and choose unpack completely. Now, I do not need the hip control. I do not need the goals or the poles. So I'm deleting these. I'm right clicking and delete. That leaves me with a, a character that only has a skeleton here in the hips and has the meshes, which are the 3D sculpt of his, his armor, his gloves, his clothes. So I select the parent object of this uh, character. I go to window. I choose Puppet 3D. It opens up a uh, floating panel. I like to dock this over next to my inspector. So here's inspector. Here is Puppet 3D with the character selected. I also want to, uh, I check this box because I would like to rig his, his fingers so I can open and close his hands. And I choose create mob rig. I click this. And I'm done. That's it. That's the entire rig. Not just one arm. That's his, that's both arms. That's both feet. That's his hips, his torso. Uh, I have his shoulders and his neck and his head all complete. So much faster. You will notice that uh, this uh, base control is very large, but that's an easy fix by selecting the character going into inspector, scrolling down for handle radius, and I'm going to pick something random. Let's go 0.3. Hey, uh, that's perfect, actually. So there we go. So look how much quicker that was. So if I wanted to rig three or four characters for, to animate a, a filmmaking scene, I would much rather use Puppet 3D than Animation Rigging Package. Now, in Animation Rigging Package's defense, it is a relatively young tool it is technically still in preview and i have no doubt that the engineers at unity will um will develop it into a very robust uh wonderful uh internally built asset but right now it represents a lot of work uh you're gonna have to do a lot of things using multi-referential and multi-parent constraints along with two bone ik constraints you're gonna have to do a lot whereas if you're a filmmaker, well, if you're an animator, you might really want to get into all of that. But if you're a filmmaker and you just want the tool to get out of the way so that you can be creative, Puppet 3D is the thing way to go. All right, that's it. That's comparison between rigging characters with animation rigging package by Unity and rigging a character using Puppet 3D, which is a third party asset on the Unity Asset Store. Uh, I believe it's regular price $50, and it is more than usually on sale for $25.
Um, I do not have an affiliate link uh, with them, so I don't benefit But if you buy it. Uh, I just want to give you um, an inside track on how to make your life easier if you're looking to do some of the things that I'm trying to do with Unity um, as a creative. All right. So if, you're, if you are into filmmaking for Unity, then this is the channel for you. And let's start a dialogue. So like and subscribe. Uh, leave comments. Uh, share some of your own workflows, your own insights. I'd love to hear them. And I will continue to share insights of my own so that your life can be uh, made simpler and uh, your frustration can be minimalized. All right. That's it for this video. Thank you for watching. And I will see you in the next one.